Hi, uh, this is the second part of a short tutorial uh, that explains how EPINet is integrated inside GVSIG. Um, in the first tutorial, we prepared, we showed how to prepare the data in order for EPINet to be able to run on your data set. So if you don't have something like this, already a working network, you might want to have a look at the tutorial uh, of the, uh, at the first part of the tutorial. Uh, right now we assume we prepared our data properly, we synced, we run this module which checks and verifies the geometry of the network and fills in some missing data. So now we are ready to run our EpiNet, EPINet module. So let's have a look what this does. This opens a uh, a wizard and the first thing it will ask is uh, a title so uh, simulation one uh, most probably these are the parts that are usually left like this you can add uh, uh, a user let's add let's be good best practice would require to add something with a meaning so first test simulation and then you just can go next so the first uh, tab here uh, the ask to define time parameters so here we can define the duration and the hydraulic time step so this will say mean that we will have three uh, executions of the module and then we have another set of EBINet related uh, parameters so you you can uh, check out the documentation of EPI net if you don't know uh, what these parameters are the nice thing of this wizard it will always remember the last parameters inserted so if you change something here it will remember it the next time you run the module the next one is uh, the top of the options parameters so here you can define uh, which model to use and um, if whether to use quality or not quality at this moment is not supported so it's quality none and here you can fill in some other parameters uh, this tab here gives you the possibilities to add some extra files which are demand, control, uh, and rules. This is all much related to EPINet. So this you, you should check out EPINet documentation here if you don't know what these entries are. Uh, this last here, as you can see, I ran it already. So it reminded, it remembered the, the last used file. Uh, this is the file, the imp file, that will be generated and on which EPINet will be run. So this file here, once generated, could be run also in EPINet standalone. So once I push next, it will ask me in which SQLite database to save the simulation. This is quite interesting because um, you can have multiple runs and place here the same database and it will save all the runs and you can then I will show you how you can evaluate the results so for now let's just have a run on this um, if you run such a network on EPI net it will most probably take two seconds to run uh, here it uh, a lot of uh, data handling data management is done for example the data are first placed into the X uh, output database in order to be able to evaluate them in any moment so even if you don't have your project anymore you can still have a look at them and then uh, as you can see the different time steps are run at at each time step the results of the module are placed inside the database, that SQLite database. So we didn't supply a particular time step, a uh, particular date 
times 10. So it will start at a default date, which back in 1970. Once the module is run, we can, oh, it will give if something has gone wrong or if there are some warnings, it will show you all the warnings here. So in this case, it will tell you that we have one or more junctions, we have some negative pressures. So the module has been run. Let's have a look at the results. So the last here in the EPI net menu is the view results. So this asks me, uh, it's already in my synced folder, this asks me just for the database and opens this kind of window. Here I have the different runs. As you can see before this simulation one I just ran, I already had a run in the same database. So it keeps the different runs here. You can select one, it will give you some information you insert it if you were a good boy. So here, as you can see, I ran everything by default. It's always good to add some good information. Then we can, we have two different types of visualization. Uh, one, let's have for the nodes, let's say pressure and for the links, let's say velocity. One is have a look at everything at a given timestamp. And the other one is to have a look at a certain node for all the timestamps. So let's first have a look at a, a certain timestamp. So let's take the first one. What will happen is in the view here, it will style things according to this variable, so for the nodes we will have the pressure. So in this case for the junctions, as you can see, the pressure is placed near the junction name. And the same in the case of the velocity applies to the pipes. So it's clear that this works well for small networks and this is how it has been used until now and we find it extremely useful to have quickly uh, uh, an overview of the whole network with also the values only the colors is, is not quite enough so this gives you a good information about w what is going on and you can just change here the timestamp and it will adapt the legend and the, the styled uh, network. The other way to go here is you want to select any node, which means also reservoirs or whatever. And it will, in this case, we, we made a very, very short simulation. So this doesn't, it, it is not very representative, obviously, but it will show you the pressure in time for that node or for a given pipe, time and velocity. So these are the different ways to have a look at the simulation. Everything is, as you can see in the folder synced, we have the M file that you can run and we have an SQLite database that you can share with anyone. Everything stays inside a single file. If we close the Epinet results browser, everything will go back to be styled uh, as it was. And you can start a new simulation. You can also add, if you found find uh, pieces that do not work, you can insert artifacts, valves or pumps and rerun the module and see if it works properly. But this is beyond this short tutorial. So this was just an overview how to prepare data and how to run your modules. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed it.